Hi, my name is Kyle Lukoff. I'm a school librarian and an author. It was hard to choose just one book to recommend for Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, but I decided to share a little bit from When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller. It's a middle grade novel about family and old stories and new friendships. It's a little sad, a little scary, and definitely a mystery. So I'm going to read a little bit to you from the beginning. In this scene, Lily, the main character, her big sister, Sam, and her mom are driving from their home in California to a small town called Sunbeam to visit their halmoni, their grandmother. Before they get there, Lily notices something very strange in the road. I gaze out the windshield. The landscape that slips by is peaceful. Gray stone houses, green grass, gray restaurants, green forest. The colors of sunbeam blur together. Gray, green, gray, green. And then orange, black. I sit up, trying to make sense of the new colors. There's a creature lying on the road ahead. It's a giant cat, with its head resting on its paws. No, not just a giant cat, a tiger. The tiger lifts its head as we approach. It must have escaped from a circus or a zoo or something, and it must be hurt. Why else would it be lying out here in the rain? An instinctive kind of fear twists in my stomach, making me carsick. But it doesn't matter. If an animal is hurt, we have to do something. Mom, I interrupt their fight, scooting forward. I think, um, there's... Now, a little closer, the tiger doesn't look hurt. It yawns, revealing sharp, two white teeth. And then it stands one claw, one paw, one leg at a time. Girls, Mom says, voice tense, tired. Her annoyance with Sam rarely bleeds onto me, but after driving for after driving for eight hours, Mom can't contain it. Both of you, please, I need to focus on driving for a moment. I bite the inside of my cheek. This doesn't make sense. Mom must notice the giant cat, but maybe she's too distracted by Sam. Mom, I murmur, waiting for her to hit the brakes. She doesn't. Sometimes the problem with my invisibility is that it takes a little while to wear off. It takes a little while for people to see me and hear me and listen. Listen, this isn't like any tiger I've ever seen in a zoo. It's huge, as big as our car. The orange in its coat glows, and the black is as dark as moonless night. This tiger belongs in one of Hal Moaning's stories. I lean forward until the seatbelt slices into my skin. Somehow, Sam and Mom continue to bicker, but their words become a low hum because I'm only focused on... The tiger lifts its enormous head, and it looks at me. It sees me. The big cat raises an eyebrow like it's daring me to do something. My voice catches in my throat, and I stumble over my words. They come out choked. Mom, stop! Mom's busy talking to Sam, so I shout louder. Stop! Finally, Mom acknowledges me. Eyebrows pinched. She glances at me in the rearview mirror. Lily, what's wrong? She doesn't stop the car. We keep going closer. Closer, and I can't breathe because we're too close. I hear a thud and I squeeze my eyes shut. The inside of my heart pounds, my ears ring, we must have hit it, but we keep going. When I open my eyes, I see Sam, arms folded across her chest, phone resting by her feet. It died, she announces. My pulse is a wild beast as I scan the road, searching for horrors I don't want to see. Nothing's there. Mom's jaw tightens. Sam, please don't throw your expensive phone around. I stare at them, confused. If the thud was just her phone hitting the floor, I twist to look for the tiger. But all I see is rain and road. The tiger disappeared. Lily, Mom says, slowing the car even more. Are you feeling sick? Do you need me to pull over? I flick flick my eyes across the road one more time, but nothing. No, never mind, I say. She smiles, relieved. I am never difficult. I make things easy. Hang in there. We'll be at Halmonia's soon. I nod, trying to act normal, casual. Even though my heart is jump dancing, I can't tell mom about this. She'd ask if I'm dehydrated, if I have a fever. And maybe I do. I press my palm with my forehead, but I can't tell. I guess it's possible that I'm getting sick. Or maybe I just fell asleep for a moment. Really, there's no way I saw a giant tiger appear and disappear in the middle of the road. I shake my head. Regardless of whether the tiger was real, or I dreamed it, or I'm losing my mind, I need to tell Halmoni. She will listen. She will help. She will know what to do. I'm going to stop reading because that is the end of chapter one, actually. Thank you so much for listening.